In this video, I want to take a look at UConn's incoming 2024 recruiting class and what sort of impact they will make in the 2024-25 season. Before we start, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. All right, let's get into this. Now on ESPN's website, UConn's 2024 class is currently rated number six in the nation. But it clearly has not been updated since the Sarah Strong signing. As it says in it, they're in the mix for the final piece to their class as well. And well, as you know, they got that final piece in Sarah Strong. Now, who has the best recruiting class is fairly subjective. Southern Cal is ranked number one as they have five top 100 players, but UConn is extremely happy with their class. Have no doubt. They have the number one recruit in the nation, Sarah Strong. In addition, they have the number seven recruit, Ali Zabel, as well as the number 11 rated recruit in the country, Morgan Chelly. As well, in a lot of ways, Jana L. Alfie is a part of this class as well, as she did not play last year and is a redshirt freshman. And Gina Oriema was just throwing her flowers the other day, saying that he thought if she was an American-born kid, that she would have been the top number one recruit in the 2023 class. So where do these recruits fit into the plans of UConn and 24-25? I think what we will do is work our way from biggest to smallest. So we will start with Jana L. Alfie. And in a lot of ways, she might be the most important player in this class for next year. Now, I know Sarah Strong as well, but El Alfie gives UConn the size that they need and what they were sorely lacking this year. Dan Conley did a piece on her the other day, and like I said, Gina Oriema was throwing her flowers. It sounds like she's fit in really well with the team culture and just a really good kid to have around the program. And she's supposedly really putting in in terms of her rehab. And they're just really excited to have her on the court. As she's a big at 6'5", but she has a wingspan that makes her 6'8". But I think the thing that really excites the UConn coaching staff is that she can handle the ball and be on the perimeter and is extremely comfortable doing that. Now, I did a video a while ago. I was probably a little bit too rough on her saying that I, I didn't know how she was going to translate defensively. I still think that she will be more of a positional type player on defense using her height, which she'll be able to do. But I think he's just so excited because she can put the ball in the basket. As she put up big numbers at the under-19 World Cup in 2023, it's actually the tournament, where she injured her Achilles in the last game they played in, which is just devastating. Just that last game. She could have gotten out of that game. Would have been such a big help to UConn last season. I'm sure Edwards would have appreciated it. Now, I thought Al Alfie got banged around a little bit in the China game and didn't think she was real physical. But Gina Oriema, who's seen more of her, says, we don't let her have any contact right now because she loves the contact. And what he's saying there is she's obviously rehabbing and she likes to bang and they don't want her to injure herself again. He went on to say she loves that kind of stuff. She loves playing like that. He also talked about how other coaches that went to the under-19 said that she was the best player in that tournament. So it sounds wonderful, and hopefully she can stay healthy and that Achilles is good and there are no more injuries for her. If she is healthy, there's a starting job for her to grab as she'll be battling potentially Ice Brady or Yana Patterson. I mean, Patterson's coming back and never really played substantial minutes as well from that knee injury. So there is a starting position there, depending on what happens through the portal as well. I know some are thinking maybe Regan Beers will come to UConn to be determined. But right now, if it the status quo stays, then she has a, a really good shot of being the UConn starting center when 24-25 starts. And then we move to Sarah Strong, and that's the real enticing thing, as Sarah Strong and if Jana L. Alfie come as delivered, then it's perfect UConn players as they can play on the perimeter and bang inside. And that is especially true for Sarah Strong. So if you watch film on her, it just seems unfair. Like half the time when she's on kids, they're just way too small to guard her. But then she's so comfortable going to the three-point line. Her shot gets off quick and it, it's a good shot. She has a beautiful stroke. And when I was watching her, it came to me. I think she reminds me of Alyssa Peely of Utah, but a tall, 
Peely, essentially. Now, Peely's listed at 6'2", but she, she laughed and said, I'm 5'11 on a good day. But despite her height, she gave South Carolina all sorts of trouble in the Hall of Fame game as she was taking the bigs to the basket or shooting three-pointers from outside. And then if they had somebody small on her, she was just punishing them at the hoop. Like at one point, she was posting up Chloe Kitts and she couldn't do anything with her. Much like Jana L. Alfie, there's a starting position to be grabbed, so it will just depend. The other good thing about this is competition is good. This puts more competition on Ice Brady. She had some good moments during the last season, but if she is inconsistent or doesn't develop more, then it'll be Sarah Strong and L. Alfie, and she'll just have to come off the bench. That pressure that puts on her to make her deliver stronger every day. And she might deliver and take that spot. She has a pretty shot as well. Like during the USC game, she was outside and crushed USC with her shot. So that should be a fun battle to watch and see how it plays out. Now the next big recruit is Morgan Chelly. She is 6'2 as well. She's in the mold of Katie Lou Samuelson, the big lanky guard that UConn loves. Now she's currently running the point for Archbishop Mitty, and she just she does everything well. The only concern with her is is her junior year she had a foot sprain and she was out six to eight weeks. And then recently she was out with an undisclosed injury. She made it back for the finals, but you should be aware of it knowing UConn's injury history. That would be the one thing you might want to look out for. And by chance, she'll be battling Caroline Ducharme, who's had her injury history as well. You can see those two games are very similar. And how Gina was very determined to have Caroline Ducharme in the starting lineup At the start of the season, even when she was not playing well, as he likes that big player that can shoot and stretch out the floor. The other two players that are in that mold are Cadence Samuels and Aubrey Griffin. With Griffin, I don't see her starting with her knee injury, I think. And and before last season, Gino was talking about how he likes her in short bursts. When when Aubrey's healthy, when when she's 100%, you saw the impact that she can have. Um, Um... I hope that we can keep her that way. Uh, anytime, you know, in your past you've had back surgery, it's always something that you worry about. But um, if we can keep her minutes in, um, in bursts, you know, uh, three, four minutes here, three, four minutes there, and not have it be prolonged, I think we can, we can keep her that way and thinks she's more effective coming off the bench. So I think they will bring her back very slowly, cautiously, to make sure she makes a good recovery from her knee injury. And much how Ice Brady will benefit from the competition of Sarah Strong, I think Cadence Samuels might make a big jump as well, just because of the competition. She knows Morgan Shelley's there, Descharm's there. She, If she tightens up her defense with her shot, she's so long, she has quick feet, she could be the starter out of all three. They're all talented. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about it. They're all very, very talented. And it's going to be whoever plays the best is going to get the minutes. And that just ramps up competition and makes everybody better. And then the shortest recruit that we'll talk about is Allie Zabel. She is a shooter. She will be going against AZ Fudd, who will be returning from her knee injury, and Ashlyn Shade. Not to mention, K.K. Arnold will want to be getting minutes as well, but you think she would primarily, you think K.K. would be backing up Paige Beckers, but they're all going to be in the mix, and it's going to be a heck of a battle. As both Shade and K.K. got valuable experience this year, like they were probably forced in the starting lineup way too soon, but you learn things through being out on the court, and they're not going to want to give up minutes. So it'll be a fierce, fierce competition especially with AZ Fudd coming back and her knee injury. I suspect they'll keep AZ Fudd, much like Aubrey Griffin. The goal for her will be to get through the season healthy. I think it'll be like 15 to 25 minutes a game. And then maybe towards the end of the season, maybe back to the starting lineup if she's going well and if she's healthy, potentially. But I could see number one goal with her And her team is basically saying, hey, goal one is you to make it through the end of the season without a major injury. So how do I see the starting lineup next year? 
in my mind, now it's early, it'll be practice and they'll fight for positions. But if I was a guessing man, and I am, I would put Jana L. Alfie at center starting, Sarah Strong at power forward, beating out Ice Brady, getting their star on the floor. And then I think he will go with three guards to start off the season. I think it will be Shade, Paige Beckers, and K.K. Arnold. And then I think they would be ramping up AZ Fudd's minutes to see how she settles in, how she is with her knee condition. I think Morgan Chelly would be fighting with Cadence Samuels for stealing minutes away from KK and Shade. I think it's going to be tough for Ali Zabel to get a lot of court time unless she really shows that shot. If the shot is good as advertised and she's and she's impressive in practice, and she, with limited time, she's impressive in the games, then obviously her time will increase. As I think moving forward into next year and the year after that, her big competition is going to be Ashland Shade. They have sort of similar games. Zabel supposedly is a little bit taller than her at six foot, and I think whoever shoots better, shows a more consistent shot, will get the playing time and win the position. And then much the same way with Morgan Chelly and Cadence Samuels. Their battle really starts next year to see who wins the starting lineup the following year. But the good thing for UConn, if they all stay healthy, then you have that competition and players are going to get better. I have no doubt, or more I should say, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody transfers out, not this not this year, but the next year, when it sort of shapes out who the starters are, who's getting minutes and who's not, because they have so much talent. But I, I wonder, with the new transfer portal rules, if you'll start seeing more players transfer. Well, we'll to be determined. Anyway, that's who I think the starting lineup will be. Your thoughts, your poison, how crazy am I? Have I gotten it wrong? What do you think the starting lineup will be at the start of 24-25? I know it will evolve over the season, but come starting day or the first few games, who do you think Gino will have for his starting lineup? All right, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night.